Hello, my name is Jay and welcome back to my Tech Vault. Today we're taking a look at a third type of CPU cooler. It's not really an air cooler, it's not really a liquid cooler, and it's supposed to perform extremely well actually. And so today we're going to be taking a look at something that's not Russian cooling, uh, it's not Arctic cooling, it's not anything like that. It's a cooler that needs its own graphics card power supply, or auxiliary power supply, the same that the graphics card uses because this thing is supposed to be super powerful. So today, we're going to go through, test it, see really what the difference is. Um, first off, we're going to be testing based off of a st Intel stock cooler um, on a processor. I believe it's an eight-thread processor, eight-core, or four-core, eight-thread processor. Basically, we're going to throw this sucker on there. We're going to test it with the stock cooler. Then we're going to put this on there, see what the temperatures are like, and get some kind of graphs for you guys to make a judgment off of that. No, this is not paid product placement. No, this is not sponsorship. Uh, this is actually something one of my buddies gave me. He thought it was a really cool cooler. He wanted me to make a video on it. Uh, he just had one laying around. So he's like, hey, make a video on this. This is cool. And no, I didn't get the scent from a company. So I did get it for free, though. But that was just because one of my friends gave it to me, not because uh, I got it from a company. So let's see what is up in this. So first off, this cooler is supposed to be equivalent to a 120 millimeter uh, liquid cooler, I believe. So I guess I kind of find that already odd is that this cooler is kind of small and I'm, I'm, I'm not joking there. This is probably about as big as the radiator would be for a 120 uh, mil fan or I guess AIO. So yeah, that's the cooler. That's all the cooler is itself. Now, one of the things I will notice though is that the heat plate, I guess, the heat plate itself has a bunch of um, heat pipes coming out of it. This is talking, we're talking like eight, I think total. Um, yeah, it looks like eight eight total heat pipes coming out of this uh, CPU cooler. Now usually on like the Hyper 212 Evo, something like that, you're looking at four maybe. So I'm already noticing that there's a lot more heat pipes, which is obviously gonna be better for thermal conductivity. But this is also not really an air cooler or the main feature isn't because it's supposed to be something called thermoelectric cooling. So let me see if I can get this out real quick. This is some odd packaging, I'm not gonna lie. Put this down. But it's supposed to basically be thermoelectric, which is some type of process, which I'm not, uh, obviously I'm not too far along in my engineering for electrical engineering yet. But for what I believe this does is supposed to be using electricity to pull the heat directly from, uh, or faster from the block. Uh, so faster from the heat spreader on the processor, basically pulling it up and making it a lot more efficient. So that is the cooler, by the way, this has got something on the bottom, so I'm just going to set this down. Uh, if it didn't, you know, that'd be a problem. So we've got some accessories in here. I think this is all trash, except we've got like a Hex 2.0 Phonic High Performance Cooler. But for the most part, let's just take a look at some of these accessories. So we've got different brackets, I believe. Uh, let's see what, what, we, what sockets we have supported. Um, make sure we have an Intel bracket, an AMD bracket, and oh, we have the sockets over here. So we have um, LGA 2011, LGA 115, and then we also have AM2 and AM3. Disappointing, actually kind of disappointing because I was expecting this to put like on a, you know, on a wide host of processors, no Threadripper support, nothing like that. Um, but I will say though that AMD, so for an AMD processor, this supports up to a 220 watt TDP from that processor, which I think is insane. So what this is supposed to have in it is actually two towers. Um, you have a fan itself in there as well. I think there's a release for the fan somewhere. What are we looking at here? It's gotta be a fan release somewhere. But basically the fan is in there and you have access to it. Oh no, can we pop this off? Maybe, perhaps. But you have the fan in the center, which uh, you know provides airflow through that. You have yourself the same power, I guess, connector you'd have on a graphics card. You have look like another fan um, junction as well, so you can hook up a fan to it. And then you've also got a micro USB uh, to, I believe, hook up to it as well. So let's take a look at some of these uh, extra cables that it comes with. So the first thing I notice is it looks like it's got, um, as I said, a fan adapter. I think, oh, that might actually be input for the CPU fan. Okay, that's, that's probably what that is. Um, I would figure though with the uh, graphics card power input, it shouldn't really need that, but obviously it's gonna need the input from the motherboard itself to determine how hard to, pull, I guess, pull heat from. Um, so you've got that. And actually, let's set that right on there. 
I think I think this is honestly interesting. It's it's a lot smaller, so I think it could definitely fit into some smaller builds. Um, it looks like this is also um, some type of. It looks like this is probably USB, so you can control it through a, some software. I would assume. I'm not planning on doing that. One thing I will notice though is that it also comes with some tools. So you've got a big thing of thermal paste, and we're talking like this says on it. It's got 1.5 mil milliliters worth of thermal paste. And that's a lot. Like that's 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 a lot in the Verge's standards. Like that's a, a good amount. I mean, the Verge, I, I I still don't think they'd be able to use that much. You also get a screwdriver. It looks like a screwdriver, some type. Um, I'm still a little upset about AM4 support. I think a bracket automatically included in the box would be great. But I think that's a pretty solid screwdriver. So looking at this from a standpoint, I'm going to go throw it on a system real quick. Um, yeah, it's obviously in good condition for it being handed down. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I'm interested to see how well it actually performs. Uh, be good for some new future builds that we're doing. We also have something, um, Be Quiet is actually sending me some stuff, so we're going to be doing it using that. Um, actually, Be Quiet has sent me some stuff before, but we'll be using probably this or something else or one of their fans or something to do a build, something like that. But for this, this actually looks pretty cool. Let me go get the system up and we'll see how well it really performs, play a couple games on it, see how it goes from there. So let's just real quick go through and run the, let this test run. Um, right now it's just started up and we really should see what the difference is and uh, let's let it go. Okay, so it's been what, about three, almost four minutes. And uh, this looks about, I guess, what you'd expect. It's uh, around 40 degrees and for the Intel stock cooler, or not 40 degrees, sorry, 70, 70 degrees. And for the Intel stock cooler, I guess you could say this is decent. Uh, you gotta keep in mind, AMD has a much higher, uh, I guess, TDP, or some of their processors run a little bit hotter, uh, I guess, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I know my Ryzen 1800X runs around 85 degrees on full loads. This is a little bit surprising, um, but this is a good reason why we do a baseline just to see what's going on. So as you can see, it's over here running um, and uh, let's just go through now and see what happens with the other cooler. Same test. Now this is using the default um, CPU profile. Uh, I've got task manager open um, and CPU isn't really being used. So we're going to pr pretty much do the same test um, and uh, we're going to run it exa again. Now the exact same test is going to probably just show us what it looks like. Um, same CPU draw, same everything. Um, and we'll just see really how it goes. So th basically the way that this thermoelectric cooler is supposed to work is supposed to pull um, directly from the CPU, uh, use electricity to pull the heat away. Interesting to see how that's going. Now the first thing I want to point out though is we have not seen a substantial jump in temperature. We've been testing and as you can see the temperature has not really gone up at all. Um, so interesting to see um, how this goes in a bit, but we're still pretty much at 46 degrees, um, which is where it was actually before. So let's see really how long after the three minutes or so where we're at. Okay, so with this installed, it's this is about averaged at right around 47 degrees Celsius. Now, a couple of things to point out. Number one, this is actually relatively loud. I've got a laptop over here that's just about as loud, and this is pretty annoying. Uh, obviously, this isn't the case, but the laptop that I've got over here is probably just as loud as this cooler, and this is a desktop cooler. Um, I know that we're trying to go for, you know, the, the I don't know, the thermoelectric cooling, uh, but I really think that the fan is a little loud. Now, there are multiple settings, but this is around 48 degrees, um, 47 degrees. We'll just say roughly 25 degrees less than the 70 that we saw in the stock cooler. So this is definitely running substantially cooler, but it is quite loud. Now, the RGB option, um, has a USB attachment, actually it's over here, that you can plug into one of your onboard, on the motherboard USBs. Uh, I do think though that the disappointment with that though is it's not really much control or sync with other softwares. Uh, it doesn't have the standard RGB headers. So it is kind of a little disappointing that you have to go through its own separate software and you really can't change the colors uh, or have them change on their own. You just select stuff and uh, it stays that way, uh, I guess, forever until you change it. So uh, for, 40, for about 25 degrees difference, uh, this is an 80 watt CPU that we're testing on. It is a pretty substantial difference and I definitely think that it is something that can keep it cool equivalent to the 120 millimeter AIO that it's advertised to beat or compete with. But for the most part, a couple things to point out is I think that at this point, uh, if you really wanted to go for something, have the perks of liquid cooling or the same level of, I guess, heat 
uh, dissipation as liquid cooling without having to worry about liquid. This is something that I guess you can consider, but I really wish and I really would hope that this company would go through and make a much bigger one because think of the potential this was equivalent to um, a 360 millimeter radiator. I think that that would be a lot more to compete with as having a bigger cooler because what the market they're trying to fit into right now is really questionable. Yes, you have a relatively small cooler that's got a low clearance that does compete well with an AIO, but any case that has about this much clearance is also going to have support for an AIO. And I understand some people are shy of them because they can leak sometimes, um, but still, I think that for this level of noise, an AIO would also be quieter. And I think that that's really what's starting to, I guess, that's one of the downsides for me. Now, obviously, I think this cooler could definitely be tweaked in a couple ways. A, have RGB support, the direct uh, modern RGB headers. This came out in 2016, so I definitely think that RGB headers, uh, something to hook up and connect with the rest of the computer, would definitely be a positive. I also think that I really don't actually have an issue with the auxiliary graphics card power going in. I think that it's odd, and some people may be disappointed with the, having to use one of theirs uh, for the cooler itself. But I could definitely understand if this was a bigger cooler that offered even more performance that most power supplies or at least modern power supplies come with the auxiliary power. So I think that there should be plenty to plug into this cooler. I do a little bit concerned though is that the cooler itself advertises the airflow coming out in only one direction and the RGB and all the uh, I guess headers and stuff are down towards the graphics card. And for the standpoint of cable management, I really want them to come up so that way you can pull them up into the case. It's a little odd spot, I guess. So that's just a couple things. Now this comes in right around 160 bucks today, and this is a cooler that came out in 2016, so we're almost pushing in three years. So as I said, this RGB header support is disappointing that it includes RGB, but it doesn't have, I guess, the ability to change it or addressable RGBs. So disappointing there. It's also rather loud. I think that had this been a bigger cooler that offered something to replace an AIO, I definitely feel like this would have had a lot more going for it. All the heat pipes, all the work that went into this, I think just a little bit more area to dissipate that heat, a few more heat pipes, and a little better thermoelectric, I guess, whatever you want to call it, heat sink, I, or the plate, I guess. You had a little bit better of that. You had something to compete with a 360 millimeter AIO. You had something that had full RGB on it, maybe a little bit RGB spi uh, spice, I guess. And you did all that, I think that this cooler would definitely be something that could compete with an AIO. Uh, I just feel like for the noise, the price, and I guess the performance that we're seeing, it's it's definitely a good, a consi I guess a consideration, but for 130, 40, 50 bucks, something that competes with a three, doesn't even really compete with a 360 millimeter rad, but you've got you know AIOs that come in right around 120. Heck, I bought one two years ago for 120 bucks, 360. The performance just isn't on par where it needs to be. This needs to either have a bigger cooler. I wouldn't mind a bigger, uh, the, the metal or the, I guess the heat dissipator to be much larger because I think that that would have offered it a little bit more. Obviously the amount of cost price there is a little questionable, but I know a lot of money went into that thermoelectric module. I just think that they needed to execute a little bit better and have a little bit more heat dissipation so it actually competes because if this was a viable if this came in right around 130 bucks where most common AIO, RGB AIOs come in you had some RGB addressable RGBs on it and you also had something that competed with the 360 millimeter rad I think that if it people would really seriously consider it because this is a much safer bet it is not going to spill water all over your parts much safer bet but for 160 bucks can't recommend it so that has been the review of the Phonic Hex 2.0. I don't know the names of some of the stuff. Uh, CPU cooler. Interesting, uh, but I would not recommend. Uh, sorry. I, I think it's definitely an interesting option. Just I, I just a little odd. So thank you. It's an odd place, and I definitely would have some recommendations for it. But thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.